Okay, now I remember what it was I was going to talk about. Um, the reason why people have to wash hands so much, you know, you're having to wash your hands like multiple times or you're having to wash it for long periods of times. If you can imagine, um, you've got a bottle and it's, uh, you put a little bit of uh, soap detergent in it and a little bit of dishwasher soap in it or, um, and I mean, like some palm olive or whatever put in there and you put water into it, you'll notice that it creates the amount of suds, lots of suds. So you, you pour it out and you pour some more water in it and you'll see that it produces, still produces suds, but a small amount and the suds pop. Um, it does, they don't have as much surface tension so that they, they pop quicker. And so then you pour it out and then you put some more water, but you still notice it suds up really quickly and then it goes away and that's because there's still a little bit of soap still in it so you have to pour it out and eventually get to a point where you don't see any bubbles appearing except for what you usually see whenever you put water in that's the reason why you have to wash um for longer periods of time is because there will still be some residual soap in there and for the virus the same the same concern that it'll take it longer, take you longer to get rid of that residual virus that might be on your hand, and so you ha it takes longer to get rid of it. It's the same sort of concern as for soap. If you if you clean your vegetables with soap, you use a small amount of soap, but it's going to take you a while to wash those vegetables before all the soap is off the vegetables. And what you the reason why people clean their vegetables this way is because they're still residual amount of insecticide on the plants even if they wash the plants they're not going to wash them to the same degree that you will because um, they're not as concerned and plus they've added all of those regulations in place to reduce the amount of, of um, insecticide you might intake keep in mind that uh, the insecticide that they use these days isn't what they put on the vegetables but what they put in the vegetables um, they put um, they put Roundup in vegetables. Then the DNA of the in the DNA of the vegetables they include um, I don't know they they mix Roundup into the genetics of the vegetables, and so you're eating vegetables when it says genetically modified organisms, especially when you're drinking your Starbucks coffee from a, the Frappuccinos from the bottle is that they're genetically modified organisms that they're using and they may put Roundup in it and which is insecticide they may be putting either Roundup or they're putting something in the vegetables that make them less susceptible to the Roundup I think they do put the Roundup insecticide in the vegetable so it's the vegetable is the insecticide and um they, I guess they make it a more problem for the bugs than they do for humans, but you don't know what effect it's going to have on humans. And that's probably the reason why you're seeing a lot more people eating organic vegetables rather than, than non-organic is that um, they're trying to, they're probably saying that um, uh, you don't want your vegetables to have the insecticide in them. You probably don't even want to have insecticide on your um on your vegetables or your your fruits um, may maybe you maybe they could use other forms of insecticide that is not going to make the um, the fruits or vegetables um, um, you know toxic to the to the person or um, genetically toxic or whatever and so that's the reason why you probably would want to go with organic food over using uh, stuff that's um, uh, genetically modified or things that um, that they use heavy amounts of insecticide on you know uh, strawberries have they have to use a lot of insecticide on strawberries I think tomatoes is another one um, any fruits that got lots of detail to them that's going to require more insecticide um, because you can't get as much insecticide into and around the surfaces um, um, 
unless you're just dousing them in it, you know. Um, the bugs are, how long is it going to take the bugs to get around the surface of the, of the um, fruit or vegetable or get into the fruit or vegetable? And, you know, if the insecticide is sprayed um, and then there's a lot of leaves around the, um, the fruit or vegetable, um, how, how is it going to get in to where the insects are? Um, there's, there's a lot of potential for other things that they could do. Um, uh, I was just hearing somebody talking about using the pee of a predator um, to prevent um, to prevent rodents and you know deer and other things from attacking crops. Um, so you could spray the pee of various sorts of animals on the. And then if they use that, then you're really going to want to wash your vegetables and your fruits because they might be spraying um, the, the defecation of an animal on your, on your fruits and vegetables. Uh, I got that from a Robert Sapolsky talk with um, um, Rogan, whatever his name is, Joe Rogan. He did a talk with Robert Sapolsky, which is uh, kind of interesting and they got into uh, lots of uh, discussions like talking about the prefrontal cortex. Things that you don't see Joe Rogan, you know, he he hits people in his programs. It's I think it's rare that he comes in contact with somebody like Sapolsky. Um, uh, anyhow, I'm just going to put this stuff up.